Hi everyone, okay, this is Gaiola Sax against Lyubomir Lobolovich, which was played at London in 1980. Gaiola Sax is one of the strongest Hungarian chess players in history, and Lobolovich, on the other hand, is one of the strongest Serbian players in history, and he was once ranked third in the world, so they, you know, they're both top level GMs. Anyway, to get into the game, Sax had the white pieces, and he opened with e4, and then came c5, the Sicilian defense. After knight f3, e6, and c3, we're seeing a delayed variation of the Alapin variation of the Sicilian defense, where white is threatening to play d4 on his next move and create a strong center. Say, for example, if c takes d4, then c takes d4, and white gets his strong center pawns. Um, so, Lebojevic countered that with d5 which is the correct way to play against the Alapin and um, the best way to meet it if um, e takes d5 then queen takes d5 or e takes d5 they're both playable but uh, e5 was played by Sax and now you notice it looks similar to the French defense and uh, this sometimes happens with the Alapin variation of the Sicilian they can transpose into the French entirely, um, which would have happened if Lebojevic hadn't played d4 here, which uh, stops the transposition into the French from happening. If he played knight c6, then after d4, the game would have transposed into the advanced variation of the French. And the move that Lebojevic played was a more ambitious and a better shot at equality with a d4. And I played the Alapin sometimes myself in bullet and blitz games, never in long games, I don't find it to be good for long games, and this kind of continuation is the most annoying, because now it's difficult to develop queenside pieces, and um, it's just awkward to play against. So, bishop d3 was played by Sax. And uh, this is better than if, say, c takes d4, then c takes d4, bishop to b5 check, bishop d7, knight takes d4, bishop takes b5, knight takes b5, knight c6, and this would be at least equal for black, so bishop d3 is a better move in that position. So then came knight c6 and queen e2, which was an unusual move really, and probably not the best continuation. I bet it here was just simple normal development, just say castling, and then Knight g d seven a rookie one knight g six g three bishop b seven and h four and white would definitely be at least slightly better here so that's much more preferable than uh, queen e two which just has some kind of like brute force ideas in mind as you see when the game continues but it's uh, definitely not the best plan so then came knight g d seven white castled and then knight g6 which is threatening to go to f4 and fork the queen and the bishop and well win the bishop and thus the bishop pair for black so um sax didn't want that and he played queen e4 and now you've seen some of the ideas he had in mind when he played queen e2 he's trying to get threats on h7 if black ever castles king's side and this also has in mind to it adding pressure to the pawn on d4 here by following up with uh, the knight on b1 to a3 and c2 and the pressure will be too much on d4 and black will have to take on c3 uh, which is what white wants but it's not really a very good or solid plan and we're really starting to see some of the problems that white can get into when the alapin doesn't go well it's like I said before hard for him to develop his queenside pieces and black is starting to take central control so it's uh, it's not looking good here for white, especially. Fritz gives uh, at least a slight advantage to black already. So, black now played bishop e7, which is far preferable to d takes c3. And after d takes c3, knight g takes e5. Because after knight takes e5, knight takes e5, it looks as though a pawn has been won, you know, because if the queen takes the knight and the bishop is hanging, but here would come bishop b5 check, and then knight d7 to save the knight, and rook d1 
from white and it would be dangerous for black and difficult for him to play this position. So um, Lobojevic played more conservatively and better, much better, with bishop e7. So then came knight a3 and black castled. So for a while he won't be able to move this knight because of the threat on h7 here. Like the only way he'd be able to move that knight is if he moved the rook first and then played knight to f8 to cover that threat. But it's not really a serious problem. Like this kind of um, brute caveman attack is just not really a good way to play. You're better off having much better coordination between your pieces, which black has here. Like this knight, for instance, is very bad on the white side. It's on the edge doing nothing, doesn't have any effect on the center where there's activity going on so you need your pieces there. This bishop too hasn't moved yet and it's stuck in behind these pawns and and it's just it's worse for white definitely and um, yeah he'd be better just well he's gone wrong early on his queen e2 move was where things started to go wrong he should have played that differently that was the initial mistake and that's just because of that mistake all the mistakes are happening and the position is just getting worse and worse so here black play or sorry white play to c takes d4 and after c takes d4 knight c2 queen c7 and rook e1 which is better than taking on d4 here because it's attacked three times and only defended once but if it was to take there then we come knight c takes e5 and why would have an isolated d pawn and again difficult queenside development so it's uh, better to play rook e1 here and then came rook d8 which secures the d pawn and here sax played h4 uh, if instead knight c takes d4 I mean it looks as though it can be taken because it's attacked three times and only defended twice, but after knight takes d4, knight takes d4, queen d7, a piece will be lost here as the knight can't be further defended by any pieces, and if it moves, then the bishop is fallen. So the pawn on d4 is immune for now. So h4 was played by sex, and then came h5, which uh, stops h5 being played by white, which would cause some problems due to the threat of the queen and bishop and uh, at the same time as dealing with those, th those threats knight d5 is also threatened here which would win the e-pawn and here Sachs played g4 which was an impulsive and bad move and it was trying to renew the threat that the queen and bishop have along this diagonal but white will later badly regret this kingside weakening as you'll see after h takes g4 came h5 so what does black play here to counter the threats there's a slight problem with knight f8 in queen takes g4 and white would be better here but instead of that the Bojovic came up with a brilliant combination at um, this stage and if you want to try and spot it then stop the video now okay what he played was knight c takes e5 which is the strongest and most accurate defense after knight takes e5 comes f5 and queen e2 which is the only square for the queen if white wants to hold on to the material as the knight on e5 is attacked twice but then came knight f4 and queen f1 is forced like if for example queen d1 then bishop d6 is crushing as the knight on e5 here is the only piece defending the bishop on d3 and white has no way to hold on to the extra piece here like his best bet would be to sack the bishop with bishop takes f5 but after e takes f5 knight g6 knight d3 rook f1 bishop e6 and um, on top of being a pawn up black would have a winning attack so that's no good so queen f1 is forced really and after b5, white resigned because the threats along the h1, a8 diagonal would just prove too dangerous to meet because of the kingside pawn moves that he's made. Um, the weakening is king, you know, and on top of that, his pieces are completely uncoordinated, whereas blacks are well set to attack 
An example continuation would be knight a3, a6, b3, bishop d6, knight g6 just to meet that threat, but then knight h3 check, king g2, and bishop b7 check with an absolutely winning attack for black. So, game over in 18 moves and a brilliant game from Labojevic. I hope you enjoyed that. Please leave any comments or thoughts. Thanks very much.